Good morning. It's Monday, the 18th of January, Monday after, second Sunday after the Epiphany. Morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, begins on page 6. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, a most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Psalms for the 18th day of the month at morning prayer begin on page 453, Psalms 90, 91, and 92. Psalm 90 is a, a famous uh, psalm comparing the eternity of God to the uh, short-lived transitory life of men. Psalm 91, uh, a great testimony to the uh, security that the faithful have who trust in God. Uh, psalm 92, uh, a celebration of uh, God's righteous government of the world, which overthrows the wicked. Lord, thou hast been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever the earth and the world were made, thou art God from everlasting and world without end. Thou turnest man to destruction. Again thou sayest, Come again, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. As soon as thou scatterest them, they are even as asleep, and fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and groweth up, but in the evening it is cut down, dried up, and withered. 
but we consume away in thy displeasure and are afraid of thy wrathful indignation. Thou hast set our misdeeds before thee and our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For when thou art angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end, as it were a tale that is told. The days of our age are threescore years and ten, and though men be so strong that they come to fourscore years, yet is their strength and but labor and sorrow, so soon passeth it away, and we are gone. But who regardeth the power of thy wrath, or feareth aright thine indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Turn thee again, O Lord, at the last, and be gracious unto thy servants. O satisfy us with thy mercy, and that soon. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Comfort us again now after the time that thou hast plagued us, and for the years wherein we have suffered adversity. Show thy servants thy work, and their children thy glory. And the glorious majesty of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper thou the work of our hands upon us, O prosper thou our handiwork. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Whoso dwelleth under the defense of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, Thou art my hope and my stronghold, my God in him will I trust. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunter, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall defend thee under his wings, and thou shalt be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness and truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for any terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the sickness that destroyeth in the noonday. A thousand shall fall beside thee, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Yea, with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the ungodly. For thou, Lord, art my hope. Thou hast set thine house of defense very high. There shall no evil happen unto thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, that thou hurt not thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt go upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou tread under thy feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. Yea, I am with him in trouble. I will deliver him, and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most Highest, to tell of thy loving kindness early in the morning, and of thy truth in the night season, upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the lute, upon a loud instrument, and upon the harp. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy works, and I will rejoice in giving praise for the operations of thy hands. O Lord, how glorious are thy works! Thy thoughts are very deep. An unwise man doth not well consider this, and a fool doth not understand it. When the ungodly are as green as the grass, and when all the workers of wickedness do flourish, then shall they be destroyed for ever. But thou, Lord, art the most highest for evermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, lo, thine enemies shall perish, and all the workers of wickedness shall be destroyed. But my horn shall be exalted like the horn of an unicorn, for I am anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see his host, of his lust of mine enemies, and mine ear shall hear his desire of the wicked that arise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar in Lebanon. Such as are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of the house of our God. They also shall bring forth more fruit in their age, and shall be fat and well-liking that they may show how true the Lord my strength is, and that there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
Here beginneth the book of the prophet Jonah. And this tells about, uh, it's a kind of prophetic narrative um, uh, with a good deal of satirical humor uh, about a prophet who's very reluctant um, to share the word of God uh, with Gentiles. Well, hello, Jude. You want to hear this too. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come, and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is come upon us. What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought, and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up, and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not the sea wrought, was tempestuous against them. There, wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And he said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim. 
When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the 22nd verse of the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And here uh, we begin with the opposition to Jesus of the scribes and Pharisees and what um, that reveals um, about them and about him. Then was brought unto Jesus one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub the prince of devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? except he first bind the strong man. Then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good, and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. 
and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. And he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Here endeth the second lesson. Well, it's maybe not entirely a coincidence that we hear about Jonah in both lessons, the reading from the, the book of Jonah, the first two chapters, and then the reference in Jesus' um, discourse here to the sign of Jonah. And uh, um, as Jonah is three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be. It's a, a prophecy, of course, of his death and resurrection. But it goes deeper than that, because, of course, by Jonah's going down into the depths, being thrown into the stormy sea, uh, the, the, the storm is, is calmed. The wrath uh, the, of God that has been manifested in the storm is appeased, and there is a great peace, and it brings about the, uh, the, the, the uh, sailors are, are, are struck with uh, awe and uh, wonder and fear. And uh, as we go on to read, we'll hear that Jonah uh, indeed takes up the mission that he was running away from to preach repentance even to the wicked people of Nineveh. And, uh, of course, we'll tell us how shocked Jonah is to find that they actually do repent. He was hoping they would all be destroyed. Uh, so it's a, a satiric uh, uh, parable uh, in a certain way. It, it's uh, On one side, it is a critique of um, the religious insider um, who is self-righteous and uh, doesn't care uh, about uh, all uh, peoples. And uh, so here's, here's a kind of... Um, a very epiphany theme, right? A reminder that uh, what we have is meant to be shared. What God has given us is something we are to share with the world in our mission. Um, also, just this, this, uh, this, uh, what's called a typology, a kind of pattern in the Old Testament that comes to life in the New, that Jesus is the true Jonah, because uh, by the sacrifice himself, uh, of himself, he appeases uh, the storms of wrath and brings peace uh, to our relation with God. Uh, and uh, in that peace, uh, we are invited to live by means of faith. Let us give thanks and praise to God our Savior in the words of the Benedictus on page 14. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, Thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. We pray for our country, its leaders, for peace, order, and good government. We pray for our churches, that they may um, bear witness to the truth, uh, not only with their words, but in their works. We pray for all those who are sick and sorrowing and suffering in any way, for our protection and deliverance from plague and pestilence. We pray that uh, we may do the Father's will and so be recognized by Jesus as his brothers and sisters. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, who dost govern all things in heaven and earth, mercifully hear the supplications of thy people, and grant us thy peace of the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we approach uh, Inauguration Day, we pray for our country. Almighty God, who hast given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogancy, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of uh, trouble, Suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for missions, for the church's mission, for our part in that mission. A God who has made of one blood all nations of the earth for to dwell on the face of the all, all nations of men for to dwell upon the face of the whole earth. And did send thy blessed Son to preach peace to them that are far off and to them that are nigh. Grant that all men everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. 
Bring the nations into thy fold, pour out thy spirit upon all flesh, and hasten thy kingdom. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Of your charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And on page 19, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, Give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we shall forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Today's a national holiday, Martin Luther King Day. I hope you have a splendid holiday and, uh, and, a, and a great day full of blessing.